1964 California Dune Buggy Dudes. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders. We are down here at the Tiki Mug section of our wonderful store. Aha, where you can pick up these amazing Tiki Mugs. To do a review of our 1964 California Dune Buggy Dudes, I thought this would be the most coolest location in the whole store to do this. So before we begin this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification so that every time we hit a major wave, you are the first to crash on the beach. Cowabunga! <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's go down to where the, uh, the sand hits the bottom of our dune buggy and where the surf is most bodacious. Let's take a look at what's in the box. And now let's return to the beach scene with our Ravel California dune buggy. And no, I'm not going to try to talk like Keanu Reeves all the way through this entire thing. <laughs> so, because, yeah, my accent just goes right out of whack. Or my personation. So anyway, we're looking at this great box from Ravel. We see all the details of the car. It's five and a quarter inches long, 103 pieces molded in white. Okay, go where you want to go. Do what you want to do. And do it in a dune buggy. This dune buggy was designed to be a cut above the rest when it comes to off-road ruggedness, and yet it looks good driving down Main Street. Two detailed engines, four or six cylinder. Uses a Corvair 6, I guess. Optional hardtop, high flotation rear tires, colorful custom decals, molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And there's all the colors you need to paint this wonderful thing with. Okay. Then on the side here, it shows it in red with the uh, hippie sunflower decals all over it. Then here it says it's skill level 2 kit, 10 plus glue and paint required. And there are the two different engine versions. There's a six cylinder, which is a Corvair, and of course the Volkswagen four cylinder. And there it is in blue. And here it is in blue again. Oh, notice it had the up top on there. So here it is with the top down. And we're back there. So now let's put this back here and pull the lid off. Oh, look, there's the decal sheet right there. But we'll look at that after. Right now we want to see our instructions, so I'll just move this right out of the way. And let's back this down. Oop. Bought by Julie, that's my wife, for me at Chinook Hobbies West for $17.99 Canadian on August 17th, 20, uh, 2001. Wow, this is from like when we were first dating. When the when the dune buggy first arrived on the scene in the 1960s, it was unique in that it was one of the first mass-marketed fun cars. This car wasn't meant to drive you to work every day, unless you were a lifeguard at the local beach, of course. It was obvious that Americans in the 1960s had more leisure time than any generation before them, and thanks to a prosperous economy, they even had the money to spend on a car that had no real purpose other than sliding around on sandy dunes. The first buggies were nothing more than a car with its body stripped, chassis raised for greater clearance, and extra large tires on the back. But companies were soon formed so that the mechanically impaired could buy parts for their dune buggies instead of having to fabricate them personally. Of course that left more time for fancy paint jobs and custom touches. Your Revell model kit is typical of the type of dune buggies that were seen everywhere for in their heyday. The fancy paint job and custom touches are up to you! So as we open it up, it shows all the colors that, on this paint chart here. And then we just crack her open. And there is the front of the car going together, the hood and the dashboard, both of which are body color, the steering wheel, and then we, we hook that into the body components, or the body itself actually. And we've got our headlights there, and there's the typical Volkswagen style taillights and the license plate lights. Now these cars in real life were Volkswagen Beetles with fiberglass bodies on the top. So of course there's our Volkswagen body, or uh, chassis I should say, the floor and interior, 
Remember the Volkswagen motors were in the back, so all the stuff was just empty basically. There's the front of it. Our suspension and our seats and the handbrake and the gear shift. And then we go over here and there is the transmission assembly for the Volkswagen. The crazy transaxle in there. Then we get into our wheels and tire assembly. And now I was right. Optional Corvair engine. This is where we start to put the engine together and then we can mount it onto the back of our dune buggy. And there it goes there. Poink, right onto the back with the transmission, transaxle. But of course we got all the pieces going together. And then if you want, there's the, it says optional Volkswagen engine, but we know this is actually the stock VW. And of course that goes together on that big pan. And there's a, a shroud here, or firewall or whatever. And you pop that all onto that transaxle. And then we get the underbody here, which we add the skid plate on so that your engine doesn't get hit with rocks as it goes over the dune buggy. Or the sands, I mean, the dunes. The camber compensator is right there because these were torsion bar suspension. And then we get into our final assembly. And there you got the roll bar and the mirrors as the body pops onto the chassis. And then here, this is like a, a little satin top goes on the top and then you've got your rear bumpers going on there and then on the back we have our decal location for both the flower power version and the pinstriped version and there you go so now we'll just fold this up and then we'll start looking at our plastic components all right so like this is totally tubular dudes we've got three part trees in this whole model <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk like Keanu Reeves anymore. Okay, so we have this nicely detailed hood right here. It's interesting to see the body molded onto a parts tree because usually these are separate in kits. There's the pan for underneath. We just got this big cross here for no reason, but okay. So these are the sides for the up top. You got your headlights here and this would be like a bunch of other little things, trunk handles and whatnot. The body looks really nice. Uh, if you turn it over though, we do have some mold marks here and the number 77 and it says copyright 1972 Ravel monogram. It's always neat to find these things so you know how old the kit is. Again, a couple of mold marks in numbers which you can take care of with your number 16 the hobby knife. This is our second part tree and what you find on this one is the underpan the front and rear suspension, the two-piece differential, steering wheel, pedals, the shock absorbers, um, the pan piece here for the engine, for the Volkswagen engine, and the back firewall for the Volkswagen engine, the center underneath of the car, both bucket seats, our wheel backs, and a bunch of the other suspension components. Now we get into my favorite part of all the model kits. This, of course, is our chrome tree. And on this tree, we have two engines. One of them is the Chevrolet Corvair opposed six cylinder, which would be these ones, these components in here. And the other, of course, is our Volkswagen four cylinder opposed engine which again is somewhere around here. There's the belt for the Volkswagen one. I think that's part of it there. There's our mag wheels, and we got roll bars and everything. Pretty complex, this parts tree, everything is so close together. There's some exhaust pipes there. The uh, Corvette belt and pulley, which is bent. And let's just turn this over. Aha, here we go. Right down here is the Corvair fan thing that goes on the top. And here we have our front windshield with the little bracket posts here, so be careful when you clip this out. Then we have our two headlights with the grills in there and our rear tail lamps, which are actually molded in clear. So if you have some Tamiya red, you can put that on there and that will fix that up. And now we have our rubber tire combination here. These are Goodyear's, the uh, custom wide tread tires. 
And the ones on the back are not really labeled as anything. But these are the Ravel old school style wheels, so you gotta cut these out. Of course, the web inside. And then if you turn it over, you'll see that they're two part wheel and tires. So one of them has a ridge on the outside and the other is sunken in. And when you piece them together, they should fit in perfectly. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet. This one sort of curved in on me a little bit, which is good because it's blocking out some of the reflection here. So we got a little Ravel monogram decal goes on there. Sand critters, zippies, some nice pinstripes. Of course, we also have these in white if you're doing a dark colored car. Then we've got a flower power, beach bum, California dune buggy, and IHT 772 license plate. As well as some of the instruments for our dashboard. And then here we have a whole bunch of hippie flowers and peace symbols for your vintage 1968 version. And that concludes our bodacious review of the 1964 California Dune Buggy, dude. Thanks so much for watching this video, dudes. All right, so here we are at our Tiki Mug display and you can get some cool stuff like this monkey shot glass as well as the teeny goddess. And this guy is cool too. Aha! I have some old Tiki Farm stuff here. But anyway, we're talking about model cars. So next week we are going to have another exciting video for you guys to dig. <laughs> and now before I go, don't forget the three magic words. Like, subscribe, and share. And pound the surf! No, the notification button. Every time I make a video, you will be the first one to see it. Cowabunga! And until next time, see you at the beach. <laughs>